Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Winter. If you're here for the first time, welcome. And if you're coming back, I'm really glad to see you. Today is Tuesday and we're doing our scripture writing today. The verse that I've chosen to do today is John 15 verses 9 through 11. Just as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full. What is the meaning of this verse? The purpose of Jesus' teachings is to bring joy to us, which is a fruit of, the, of abiding in his love and obeying his commands. Guys, I'm sorry that my voice sounds like gravel pit. It doesn't sound like that until I get on and record videos. And it drives me crazy because it's Satan coming in and attacking my voice because he knows it drives me crazy. So I apologize for the gravelly voice. How do I apply this to my life? Knowing that I am going to receive joy from Jesus just for obeying his commands makes it easy to do so. What else have I got to do? Why don't I want to be joyful? Why would I want to pass that up? And if he is promising me joy <laughs> just by following his commandments, I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow his commandments because I like joy. Joy feels really good and it's not happiness. There's a difference. I've talked about this before. Happiness is fleeting. Happiness is something that comes in the moment and then is gone. Joy is there all the time unless Satan comes in and robs it from you. Help me. Help my words come out. Help me to say what I need to say without stumbling over my tongue. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Get out. I might leave that in so you can see the frustration that I go through with Satan. He is such a pest. He just never gives up. He never gives up. He and his little minions just are constantly nee, 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 nee. Just it's constant when you're a believer. If you're a non-believer, you don't go through this. You do not you do not go through this. But I'll tell you something else. We get to win over Satan. He doesn't get to win over us. And that is what makes being a believer all worth it. Number one, I know where I'm going when I die. That's the number one thing. I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to hell. That's the number one thing. The number two thing is the love that I feel from my maker is beyond anything I've ever known in my life. The number three thing is, is he keeps his promises and he is amazing in how he keeps his promises. And the number four thing, I'm just crazy about God. I'm crazy about him. He is truly, 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 truly the love of my life, the love of my life. So getting joy from having a relationship with him and getting joy from doing what he wants me to do, that's what I want to do. And the flesh comes in and it tempts me. The other day it tempted me to want to smoke pot. I'm like, no, no, I really don't want to do that. I never get tempted to drink. Is that true? Am I lying to you? Once in a while, once in a while, I mean a great while, like maybe once every three or four years, gee, I want to drink because it's Satan trying to, you know, poke at me, but I will not do it. I don't care how much Satan tries to tempt me to do anything. I will not do it. Will not do it because there's too much at stake. I made a promise to God that I wouldn't drink anymore. I made a promise to God that I wouldn't smoke pot anymore. I have made a promise to God that I won't do certain things anymore. And when you make a promise to the maker of the universe and you go back on that promise, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. And I don't want to pay for it. I've been paying for my mistakes my entire life and it wasn't fun. The sowing and the reaping that I have had to do throughout my entire life, God, Lord help me. <laughs> the sowing and the reaping that I have had to do my entire life for what I have done, my behaviors, I'm over that. I am over all of that. So I hope you got something out of this message. This is going to be a fun one to edit. <laughs> I hope you got something out of this message and I love you all. Leave a, leave a comment below if scripture writing is helping you, if you're doing it. And I want to show you my book. This is my book that I created. You can get it on Amazon. I really love the way it looks. Of course I would. I created it. Here's the title page. And then all the rest of the pages will look like this. There are 110 pages in here for writing your scriptures. You can put stickers, you can color, you can do whatever you want in here. 
but you've got lots of room for writing. So I hope you'll pick one of these up and help support this channel. That would be awesome. I would love that. And I'll give you a really good close up. And if you would like to see it in a smaller size, this is a composition notebook size. I can do that. I can do a six by nine or five by seven if you would like something smaller that you can maybe carry in your purse or a bag. But I like the feel of this. I do. I really love the feel of it. It's just really nice. So if you want to, that would be great. Buy one of these. Buy one as a gift for somebody who, you know, you want them to start scripture writing because you've told them about it. This would make a great gift with a pen set to go with it. That would be really nice. And maybe a Bible if they don't have one. That would be a really nice gift to welcome somebody into the family. I also have two PDFs that I will have it in the description below that you can print off on your printer if you want to write on those as well. So thank you so much for being here. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.